Good morning and good afternoon uh, to everybody on the call. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Michael Josephs and I'm the marketing manager at Cetra Systems. I'm joined by our critical environments product manager and in-house expert, Michelle Mendoza. Um, again, thanks for joining today's webinar where we will be going over uh, critical sensing solutions for healthcare and hospitals. Today, we'll talk a little bit about everything, uh, room pressure monitors, particle counters, um, different technologies and different um, options that we're seeing in the healthcare and hospital space. A lot of these technologies were important before COVID, uh, but now during and hopefully as we as we start moving on from COVID, they're going to remain um, very important. So we're so happy to be able to share all this um, with you today. So before I hand it over to Michelle, um, just a couple of quick notes. Um, if you have a question that comes up, We'll have time for a Q&A after Michelle wraps up. You can use the chat functionality in your GoToWebinar window box to ask a question. If you have anything pressing during the presentation, feel free to jump on and ask a question there. In addition, um, we also have one poll that I'll put live, uh, I think after uh, the, the 11th slide or, or around that point, uh, Michelle will give, give me a cue to go ahead and put that live. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, it's just a way for us to uh, hone the presentation in and be a little bit interactive today. So again, thank you so much for joining. And without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Michelle. Michelle, good morning. Thanks for joining. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, appreciate you all joining us here today. Um, so we have a lot to get into today and I wanna make sure we have time for questions at the end. So. I'm just gonna hop right in for talking about critical sensing solutions in healthcare and hospital applications. So when we talk about critical environments in general, it refers to applications where the HVAC airflow, the room pressure, temperature, humidity, particle count, all of these key parameters are critical to that application because of the life safety related to those applications. So you wanna be able to monitor and maintain these environments. We show some examples here, and then of course, we're gonna go through the hospital and healthcare related examples, but other critical environments include pharmaceutical manufacturing, clean room manufacturing um, as well. So all of these places uh, have uh, importance around the safety aspect of people working in and around these areas uh, that make the parameters of the environment uh, essential to monitor and alarm on and be able to track for both safety and compliance reasons. So this is just a quick overview of, of critical environments, what makes them, them critical, and now we'll go into the healthcare and hospital environments where the, those environmental parameters are uh, most important to staff and patient safety. So here's the first example, the operating room. So of course, many of us know that the operating room is uh, one of the most clean environments in a hospital that they, uh, you know, that there's a lot of importance placed around keeping the patient that's being operated on as safe as possible, ensuring that the, uh, that the air in the operating room is safe and clean so that there's no additional risk added to the patient undergoing surgery. And so to do that with airflow, you keep the operating room at a positive pressure relative to the outside space. What that does is it means that any particles that are in the air that could be harmful, any bacteria, molds, viruses, we're obviously very familiar with COVID-19 right now, anything that would be an airborne particle is not able to enter the operating room underneath any you know, door crevices or gaps in the, uh, in the seal of the operating room because that positive air pressure Based, or created by the HVAC system is pushing the air out. And so that helps keep that, that space maintained in as safe as possible environment. Uh, you wanna be able to monitor this positive pressure and ensure that it's occurring as, as desired. Uh, and obviously, you know, to, to make sure that that operating room is safe to, to work in for the day. 
And so that's where our room pressure monitors come into play. But operating rooms also have parameters, uh, other parameters that are important to maintain safety of the patient and the equipment inside, like temperature and humidity, and even particle counters, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, later on in the presentation. Even particle counters are important and helpful in the operating room space. Um, hospitals, as, as you start to do the surgery, the operating room becomes more dirty because there are, uh, you know, activities being done that are generating particles from the patient, from the activities, uh, you know, that they're, they're doing uh, in the surgery as well as from the staff working. And so as surgery is going on, there are particles being released into the air. And so if you're able to get a handle on what that level of, of particle count is, as a baseline and then be able to check if that deviates, that's a really helpful way to ensure that this, the uh, particle count in the air is as safe as possible for the patient and that there's there's nothing unknown going on because these particles, of course, are, are not able to be seen. So you wanna keep the bad stuff out and you wanna make sure that there's no lingering bad stuff inside. So um, all of that can be monitored with the Cetraflex, which we'll go into in more detail as well. Um, but just wanted to share that application of the operating room as one of the most critical areas in hospitals and healthcare. Then we have the Airborne Infection Isolation Room or AIIR room. Um, this is has been extremely important to hospitals' COVID responses across the, the globe. Uh, I'm sure many of you have learned a lot more about airborne infection isolation rooms over the last year. Um, you can see some examples that we have here. Uh, we have our Cetra light on the wall in that example shown from a hospital up in Canada. Um, another Other options include the Cetra uh, SRPM room pressure monitor, which is shown in the, in the schematic image. And what needs to be done here is to keep any bad stuff in. And so this is an isolation room. So the people who are in these rooms have highly contagious diseases like COVID-19, like tuberculosis. Um, those are are some of the most common uses for airborne infection isolation rooms. And what you're doing is you're protecting the people that could be in the hallway and in the rest of the hospital by creating a negative pressure. So you actually, in this case, want the airflow to be going into the room from th through any gaps that would be in the space. So it's the opposite of what we talked about in the, in the operating room. And again, the HVAC system is the most common way to create this negative negative room or airborne infection isolation room. So if you're working um, you know, in a hospital, in a facility, or you're working with a facility that is wanting to create an isolation room, um, there's lots of things to consider and make sure that um, you know, you're understanding to, to set up the right monitoring system. And it's, it's key to have that monitoring set up there on the negative pressure because that's how you know, uh, you know, as the staff is walking by, as you're getting ready to, room, to use the room, that's how you know that it's going to be safe and effective. Uh, one of the schematic that we're showing here is one other way that isolation rooms are sometimes set up. Uh, you can have an ante room or a small room that is uh, attached to the isolation room. So before you enter the isolation room, you start in the hallway, you enter the small ante room, which would have a door uh, on both sides where the red arrows are shown. And then the door from the corridor would shut and then the uh, door to the isolation room would open. So it's an extra precaution around isolation rooms and an additional way to, to create that negative pressure. But again, when you're setting up the monitoring, you'll want to consider does the, does, does the facility have a building automation system and will the monitoring on this isolation room need to be sent back to that building automation system so that they can have all that information in aggregate. All of our room pressure monitors can send a signal back to the building automation system, whether it's an analog output signal or a backnet signal. Again, understanding the communication protocol that the facility is preferring is important there. Um, and then what kind of alarming is the facility looking for? Both audible and visual alarms are used across these different isolation room applications and both local and remote alarming. So a monitor on the wall that is showing red versus green, beeping, making a noise, uh, whether it's happening at that room and or at a remote location, 
is also important. So we'll talk more about how our monitors can help with all of these different options and kind of which applications are typically used with, dif with the different options as well. You may also want to be looking at multiple isolation rooms in one space um, and looking at what else is is there if this is a an existing an existing uh, space or if it's a new construction what's going to be there so again we know that COVID-19 has really escalated the focus and obviously the attention on airborne infection isolation rooms and so one of the products that that is one of our newest products that we developed from seeing the from seeing the responses and the needs from COVID-19 is called the Cetra Air Watch. And so we, what we saw is that a lot of hospitals and healthcare facilities, long-term care facilities, nursing homes, even doctor's offices and dentist offices, were looking at how they can create as safe a space as possible and expand their capacity of these isolation rooms because COVID-19, of course, was was overwhelming the systems in many in many places. And so typically the HVAC system is used to create negative pressure, but that requires construction. It's very invasive. It's usually a big project. And so the Cetra Airwatch is a way to easily bring in a portable small unit um, to create on-demand negative room pressure. So you can use this unit uh, to exhaust air out of a space and turn it into a negative isolation space in lots of different applications um, and and it allows you as well to have flexible capacity so if you need to move it around two different patients it's on wheels and it's not a permanent installation and so that that allows you to expand and and move your capacity as well around negative pressure um, creation and negative of negative pressure isolation rooms um, so there's a lot that you can do with the Cetra Airwatch, depending on what your need is. Also, of course, you know, in some in some applications, you may be thinking about the the people inside the space and not necessarily isolating them uh, if they're not known to have COVID, uh, you know, to be to be a COVID patient. You may just want to improve the air quality in that space, which is is important as we're all considering returning back to workplaces, offices, um, various spaces where you'll be around a lot more people. Anytime that you can increase air circulation, is go it's going to be beneficial in reducing any risk of getting exposed to airborne contaminants like COVID-19. And so the AirWatch, if you just remove that black uh, exhaust pipe that's shown in the image, uh, which can be done easily, you know, it's, it's just a, a small clamp that's taken on or off, you can actually use the AirWatch as an air purifier because inside of the unit is both UV light and HEPA filtration. And so lots of flexibility and um, capabilities can be created with the Cetra AirWatch. Uh, but specifically when you're thinking about airborne infection isolation room, this is something that can allow you to expand that capacity. So the next application that I wanna talk about is the protective environment or the positive room. So this is a place where uh, patients would be kept that are immunocompromised to, some, to the patients that would actually be at risk themselves. So you want to protect the patient in the same way that we talked about in the operating room scenario. You want positive pressure relative to the outside so that anything that's out in the hospital in the corridor is not at risk of entering the space where you're keeping the immunocompromised patient. And so this is actually an image from a uh, children's cancer hospital here in the U.S. where they're using the Cetraflex to show that there is positive pressure in that patient room and that that patient is being kept as safe as possible with the pressurization uh, in the space that they're being kept. There's also compounding pharmacies that are um, located in many hospitals and healthcare facilities. This would be places where um, uh, specific drug uh, specific drug compounds are created and put together for patients. So if, if, a specific, if a patient has a specific drug cocktail that they need for their treatment, if, and it's not something that's, that's mass produced, there's hospital compounding pharmacies that would put that together. But of course, when you think about pharmaceutical manufacturing, that all happens in uh, clean rooms, in 
as safe a space as possible, uh, the cleanest air as possible, so that there's no contaminants getting into these these uh, pharmaceutical drugs that are pe that people are going to take. So it typically is used in uh, chemotherapy, where they're creating these specific drug cocktails in the hospital. Um, so of course, you want to keep this at a positive pressure again to protect from any bad stuff that could be out there. Um, they almost always have an anti room really are used with them as well. Um, it's very similar to a lab or a, a manufacturing facility that you may a cleaner manufacturing facility that you may see out in other spaces. But this is just a small compounding pharmacy located typically in the hospital, sometimes in its own small site. Um, there are a lot of uh, regulations here in the US as well that I'll talk about um, shortly that are that dictate what needs to be monitored in these spaces to ensure they're they're as, as safe as possible. But when you think about pressure, of course, keeping that positive pressure and having a room pressure monitor both in the ante room and outside of the entire space is important um, to make sure that positive pressure from the corridor to the ante room and from the ante room to the compounding pharmacy is being maintained. There's also a particle count that is typically collected and, and measured in pharmaceutical manufacturing and in compounding pharmacy. And so we'll talk more about our particle counter line a little bit later, um, but just wanted to, to bring that up here as we talk about compounding pharmacies. Uh, this application is a nurse's station multi-room monitoring area. Um, and so this is um, an option where you can have a single monitor that displays multiple rooms down a corridor. So if you imagine this uh, in the image shown that this is a central spot where nurses are working, if they can have one monitor showing them the status of multiple different rooms, then they'll know as if any of those rooms go into alarm before they even start to go down the hallway and look around and look where that's al that alarm is coming from, they'll have that indication in a central location. So this is common in, um, in many nursing station applications so that they can see before they go to, um, you know, to check on the space exactly where that alarm is coming from. There are a lot more spaces that the Joint Commission is inspecting for pressurization and that the Joint Commission uh, dictates should be pressurized for the, in, in hospitals and healthcare for the safest possible operations. So spaces like sterile processing, linen storage, um, if you have dirty linens from a patient's room, you don't want any of those particles getting out. Even the emergency department where you're not sure you know, you haven't diagnosed the patients yet, you haven't seen them, they're all in there in that emergency department. Um, you want to think about, or you, you want to look to the Joint Commission's recommendations on pressurization of all the different spaces across hospitals. The ones that we just talked about are some of the most critical spaces that need monitoring, they need visual or audible alarming, but some of these can get um, oftentimes overlooked. Um, however, in recent years, the Joint Commission has been inspecting a lot more of these spaces for the correct pressurization. And so if you were to have an audit or come around, you need to be able to prove and show that these spaces are pressurized. And so we'll talk about um, the sector light, which enables you to do that here shortly, um, because even though these spaces are, are um, you know, don't have as many requirements around monitoring as the operating room or the airborne infection isolation room, they still need to comply with the code. So just some other examples, USP 800 is related to the compounding pharmacy. Um, you can have uh, outpatient surgery centers, uh, the, the anteroom scenario, all these different, different spaces are, are considered when the Joint Commission is coming around and looking and auditing around pressurized spaces in, in hospitals and healthcare facilities. So I wanted to pull up a poll question really quickly, um, just to, to see what you're all experiencing um, in your applications in the field um, and and just hear from you on on which of these applications have you seen monitoring in your experiences. So um, Mike, if you can help me get that uh, poll question up and kind of instruct people how to how to reply, um, you can select multiple. I'd love for for all of you to select all of the spaces where you've seen monitoring used in hospitals for pressurization. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. We should have the poll up um, 
and everybody on the call should be able to see it. Looks like we're starting to get some votes in. So feel free, as Michelle said, to select all that apply. Uh, we'll give people another 30 seconds or so to answer that Great. point. And then Michelle, I think um, once that ends, um, you'll have to reshare your screen. Oh, okay. Great, so it looks like lots of you are seeing it in airborne infection isolation rooms and protective environment rooms and then operating rooms as frequently after that. Um, sterile processing as well. We didn't talk about too much, but uh, that's a key area. It's, it's related to surgery and operating rooms. They work closely with the operating rooms and provide them with their equipment, um, but they need to, to sterilize the equipment coming in and out of the hospital. Not a lot of examples or um, uh, emergency department examples, which I, I understand and that, that, you know, that ties to what we just spoke about, which is, it doesn't have as many requirements uh, from a regulatory perspective for monitoring and compliance, but it's important to know what the status is. Um, so we'll talk about how the sector light can help you with that here shortly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna Great. give people another 10 seconds to get their votes yep. in, um, and then we can go ahead and, and reshare the presentation. Great. All right. Yeah, thanks Jason. everyone for sharing. I'm gonna go ahead and close. Okay. And then there we go. Your screen's back up. It's back up. Okay, look at that. Easy enough. Cool. Well, that was really great to get to hear from from all of you on what you're seeing out there, um, and it does align with uh, you know with what we've seen on our end as well. Airborne infection isolation rooms and operating rooms being the most commonly uh, monitored spaces because they are, of course, uh, you know, critical in terms of what's actually going on in the spaces and there's regulatory um, compliance around them. But like we spoke about, if you were to have um, an audit come around uh, on your pressurized spaces, you do need to be able to show that you're complying with codes. And of course, you want to ensure that your facilities are as safe as possible for everyone working there. And so with that idea in mind, the Setra Light was developed a few years ago. Um, you can see the Setra Light here. It's a small visual indicator uh, about the size of a light switch um, that you would put on the wall that tells you the status of the room. And this allows you, allows the facilities manager and any, everyone, you know, anyone managing that space to have an affordable and accessible solution for monitoring your pressurized spaces. Oftentimes, uh, these checks were done by manually having someone walk around, put a tissue up against the wall, or write down a signal that wasn't sent anywhere. But if you use the Setra Light, you're able to collect all that information um, through an analog signal out to your building automation system where you can track and record everything. And you can look down the hallway if you had multiple Setra Lights installed, and you can see that light ring all the way down the hallway because it jumps out from the from the monitor a little bit. So it's a simple, fast, effective way to monitor some of those um, those spaces that aren't as typically uh, monitored, like the emergency department, sterile processing, uh, the clean and dirty linen location. So it's great application. It's great for those applications and more. Of course, we have seen a lot of customers use them in the airborne infection isolation rooms that were created and added in their COVID responses. And so um, I just wanted to quickly cover what we um, what we developed in response to the customers' needs around COVID. And so we we created these kits with the Setra light. And so in some scenarios, customers needed really fast installation. In some their um, their pressurized spaces were actually moving around using a unit like the Setra Air Watch, and so you didn't want a permanent monitor on the wall. And so we have quick mount kits, a desk kit where you can actually uh, display it just by propping it up on a surface nearby, even a portable kit and a construction kit where you can actually carry around the Setra light with you and get spot checking if you're not able to set up permanent monitoring. The construction kit as well is something that goes well beyond um, COVID, where if you have retrofitting projects going on in your facility, you don't want any particles being generated by, um, by the construction to get into the rest of the facility. And so pressurizing the space is a very common 
uh, practice that cost, that construction companies do. And you can use the Cetralite construction kit to ensure that the, that the pressurization is kept at all times. And so if, if, you know, the project manager, the hospital facilities manager comes around, they can see on this construction kit that that pressurization is being maintained. So lots of different options available with the Cetra Light in response to what we saw people doing with their COVID responses. Um, so now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the Cetra Flex. So the Cetra Flex is our most advanced monitor that we have, and it's it works as a hub for all the sensor inputs, um, and it's your localized display of things like pressure, temperature, humidity, air changes per hour, particle count, um, door status, HEPA filter status. Lots of different um, different parameters can be brought into the central light over backnet or over analog, whether it's a, another central meter that we provide, which we do provide all of those different parameters or even a third party device if you wanted to bring it in to show on the Cetra Flex. And so here's a couple of the, the highlights. It shows you three different rooms. You can have six parameters per room. You can actually set up all those parameters um, to be anything that you would like. So if you need five different pressures to be shown on one room or one space, that can be done. Um, or you can order the standard Cetra Flex and we have pre-configured pressure, temperature, humidity, and air changes per hour, which are the most common parameters that we see monitored. Um, so lots of different options here. There's even a, a control option that you can order if you need a uh, PI loop control signal to be sent from the monitor, or sorry, from the flex uh, control unit, you can do that as well. So a lot more um, you know, advanced capabilities, a lot more parameters being shown for some of those complex spaces like operating rooms or even for like a, a hallway where you have several isolation rooms. If you want to show that in one spot, you can do that here with the Cetra Flex. Um, I also wanted to quickly talk about um, what we have, which is called a, a hot wire replacement kit, where you can take the Cetra Flex and if you are in a facility where some of these um, older uh, competitive model units are being used. They're actually using a technology that is is really not not best practice for monitoring pressure because there's a hole in the wall going through the space, and so um, there's a lot of risk for contamination, um, which can make your your reading not as accurate as it as it should be um and then of course you know there's there's a hole in the wall and so if anything does happen to your pressurization the protection that you were hoping for is is really not not happening through there so we actually have this kit where it's a um a simple replacement if you had one of these monitors on the wall and you wanted to upgrade it to a more effective unit like the Cetra Flex. Um, you can actually snap this kit into place and it will cover up that hole in the wall and then you install the Cetra Flex and um, it allows you to, to uh, you know, start using the Flex instead for your pressurization uh, monitoring. So that's the Cetra Flex hot wire replacement kit. Uh, there's more info about it on our website if you are interested. And again, we've talked about the Flex and the Light mostly. Um, there's a lot more options uh, that we have the SRPM, the SRIM, the multi-room monitoring station, the SRCM. Um, and so based on what you need specifically, we have something that can that can fit that, whether it's the different parameters, the different type of alarming, the different communication protocols. I also wanted to quickly touch upon our, our software solution, which is called Cetra SEM, or Continuous Environmental Monitoring um, Software. And so, this software can actually take in all of this information that you're showing locally and provide you with logging, trending, remote alarm notifications over email or text. It's a centralized data source without the hassle of expensive data loggers because it's all sent um, through the cloud if you're able to use the cloud or if you need an on-prem solution, that's an option as well. It gives you 24-7 um, access from any web portal to all of your parameters. Um, and we talked about the BAS, that's typically run by the facilities department. And so if more people need access to this information, then SEMS is a great solution for that because any multiple people can access it at any time from any web-based um, browser. Multiple people can get uh, email or text message alarms. Um, and so you have that ability to have remote alarming as well. Um, one of the areas, um, 
where we see stems being used, this is just a quick overview there, is uh, compounding pharmacies. Uh, because uh, it's such a critical space and has a lot more, um, you know, there are a lot more regulations than are just in, in hospitals, in hospital um, settings, because they're doing pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing, basically, but in this compounding pharmacy setting. And so uh, the USP 797 and USP 800 uh, regulations apply to compounding pharmacy. And you have to be able to, uh, you know, to prove that your space is safe according to those regulations. And so the Cetra Stem solution allows you to ensure those sterile conditions at all times to monitor an alarm on them, to have logging of it and historical trending. Logging of the alarms as well and any deviations is key and it's something that you can do with, with the Cetra Stem. So that's just a, a, a quick dive into a little bit more detail around how the Cetra Stems um, software can help with compounding pharmacies, um, but it's also you know, able to help aggregate that data, trend the data of any other um, facilities as well. But we just wanted to call out compounding pharmacies specifically um, because we're gonna quickly touch upon particle counters as well. Um, and those are key in compounding pharmacies. There's a lot more um, uh, regulation in those USP 797 and 800 around the particle count level in your space where you're doing, where you have the compounding pharmacy. And so these um, particle counter units, uh, they allow you to have um, uh, handheld monitoring where you can collect that data um, intermittently as needed or continuous monitoring, which is key to make sure that no deviations are happening unexpectedly. Uh, with these these particle counters that are that sit in the in the facility, monitor at all times and send that information back to, uh, for example, the Cetra Stems or to uh, another software that comes with the unit. Um, in in hospitals and healthcare, you know, Cetra is well known for room pressure monitors and pressure sensors, and so to have the Cetra name on a particle counter is really nice combination there. But the particle counters themselves are also also have a lot of benefits. Uh, the amount of data that they can store on the unit is um, is 45,000 records at one time. And so that's quite a bit of data that allows you to, to store on the unit if you're not able to get it into a into a space for um, you know to to download that data for your for your auditing and recording purposes. You can save and transfer the data while the machine is running. Um, you can you can do annotations on the data as well for anything that you need to to note there. It's a touchscreen interface on the particle counter and um, has multiple communication output options available to you based off of what you need. Um, and again, it, it has its own software that you can use, or it can be have the data sent to the Cetra Stem. Um, so lots of capabilities with the particle counters. Lastly, I just want to touch upon um, where you may see particle counters in in healthcare applications. So we talked about compounding pharmacies, and then of course pharmaceutical manufacturing. The FDA requires monitor <coughs> requires monitoring of particle counts because you're in a uh, a clean room environment that has to be maintained sterile, and so some level of um, regular interval monitoring is required for these spaces. And any of our SPC models, whether it's the handheld for checks uh, and to find contamination sources or fixed installation, sending data out back to, uh, for example, the Cetra SEM, those are all perfect for, for that, uh, that requirement to keep your space as safe as possible. Um, the handheld unit as well is really helpful if you do have a deviation and you're trying to figure out where that's coming from. Uh, you can use the handheld unit to uh, check different areas that you may be suspecting an issue, um, or even just check, you know, across your different across the locations in your facility and look for where the elevated particle count is coming from. So really helpful for that. Um, and we talked about ORs. ORs, as the surgery is being done, are essentially uh, quote unquote dirty clean rooms. Um, hospitals are getting more pressure to keep ORs as clean as possible. And using something like a handheld particle counter can show that the airflow system is working. Um, and you can also uh, look at ways to 
uh, you know, to use the particle counter to ensure that the space is safe so that you can manipulate that airflow and conserve energy when the particle counts are low, um, well below, you know, whatever your threshold in, is. And then we talked about construction sites as well. Um, we have the Cetra Light construction kit to help with pressurization monitoring, but a handheld unit for particle counting like the SPC 8000, it's really helpful to spot check as well. And then as we think about indoor air quality in office areas, many public spaces like commercial buildings, hotel lobbies, libraries, like lots of different different um, commercial spaces have air quality on the mind. Um, and I know, you know, in many healthcare facilities, there are offices where um, a lot of people are working together in, you know, in, in single spaces. And so a lot of healthcare facilities are looking at ways that they can uh, confirm to their to their people that are coming back to work that it is safe to be in that space altogether. And so um, indoor air quality can be monitored with something like with with the particle counters. Um, we actually have an AQM series which measures CO2 and TVOC levels on top of the particle count. Um, and so this is really about ensuring that the people in the space are comfortable uh, being in that space. You know, a lot of people are, um, you know, there's there's gonna be a lot of hesitancy coming back to large group settings indoors. And so being able to ensure that that air quality with something like a particle counter is key. Um, and then I'll just, I'll bring that, bring that point back to the air watch, which we talked about earlier. If you do need to add in air circulation, air purification, that's a great, a great unit to bring in as well. Um, so, that's where you may see particle counters come up across healthcare and hospital um, applications. And now I will pause here and we covered a ton of information, so I'd be happy to take any questions. Of course, our website has a lot more information too. Um, if you're interested in the software we talked about, cetra.com forward slash them, or if you have any um, sales related questions, um, and you're in the, the Middle East region, Rabia is your, your main contact there. So thank you so much for, for joining with us today. Um, and I will turn it over to Mike to see if there are any questions. Thanks, Michelle. We did have a number of questions come in. Thanks everybody for your time as well, uh, like Michelle was saying. Like we said in our email, this presentation has been recorded um, as soon as that recording is finished processing. Um, I will send another email with that link for everybody to access it. Also, um, I guess you wouldn't be hearing me if you weren't able to attend, but all those that weren't able to attend will have access to the recording as well. So let's dive into the questions. The first question that came in says, does the Cetraflex come in a stainless steel frame? Good question. Um, so the flex itself is um, does not come in a stainless steel frame, but we do have other monitors um, available, like the the Shrim family, S R I M. Those have uh, stainless steel frame options available. All right. Thank you. Um, does the S R P M display in P A, or is it only in inches of water column? Okay. Um, so all of our monitors, you can um, order it to be calibrated uh, in either inches of water column or in Pascals, and you can just do that with your ordering uh, part number. Um, and But on top of that, I think almost all, I'm pretty sure all of them also have the ability in the menu of the unit itself to switch the units. So if you, you know, if you had an inches of water column unit and you want already in your in your possession and you want to show Pascal's, you can do that by adjusting the the menu in the menu as well. The units are available to adjust. Um, but if you take a look at the ordering part number, we always offer the option for inches of water column or Pascal's. Thank you. And I just saw a note come in um, asking if it's possible to send us the presentation. Um, I believe that's fine, Michelle, right? If we, if um, anybody wants the presentation itself to send that off. Yeah, I would say that if you, if you are looking for a copy of the presentation beyond just the webinar recording, reach out to, um, you know, to Rabia or reach out to us in a, in one of our, our contact forms and we can send it to you individually. 
Excellent. Thanks, Michelle. And I just want to encourage yep. uh, other folks, feel free to use that questions tab you have to ask any questions. We'll try to get to, there's quite a few here. We'll try to get to as many as we can before wrapping up. Can we do zero calibration with the cover installed? That question might have been referring to Satra Light. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, oh, light. for the light. Okay, great. Um, uh, yes. So, what you can do with the Cetra light is um, you can do uh, uh, zeroing of the unit with the cover with the cover installed, like you're asking. So yes. So what you would do is um, best practice would be to uh, you know when the room is not in use, uh, when the space is not in use that you are that you are um, monitoring uh, because you want to do this in the safest possible way. Best practice is to actually um, open all of the doors or uh, all of the doors or barriers that would be uh, across the, you know, the hallway, the anteroom, the protected space. Um, open all of those so that the pressure is equilibrium across all all of the um, all of that area that you're monitoring. And so then you truly have ensured that you have, uh, you know, a zero pressure differential across the space. Um, so that's best practice there for zeroing it. And then the unit itself can just be zeroed. Um, uh, you may you may want to take the cover off to go through the menu items on the central light, um, but it, you know, it, it just snaps on and off. And so if you'd like to do the zero calibration or the zero um, check with the cover on, you can snap the cover off, go through the menu to get to the zero, uh, the zero check, and then put the cover back on. So lots of lots of options there, but to access the the menu of the central light and adjust things, you do just have to snap that front cover off. Thanks, Michelle. Are DODI and AOAI available at nurse nurses stations? Okay, so so the nurses station application that we showed was using the an example of our our monitor called the uh, MRMS or the multi room monitoring station, and what that does is it picks up signals over BACnet from the SRPMs or the SRCMs that you have installed, and it can actually when they're all on the on the same BACnet um, communication channel, it can. Um, it can automatically detect the units and then you know and show them in that single space so that specific example that we showed for the nurses station is over backnet communications but if you need um analog communications you should look at the at the cetra flex um which can take in multiple um multiple analog uh inputs and display that at a single location if you needed that for for your nurses station Thanks, Michelle. Uh, so I know Katie, our other product manager, um, is more of an expert on Cetra SEMS, but I'll still ask the question because we talked about it in this presentation. Is Cetra SEMS mm -hmm. available for local server installation? Yep. Yeah, so if you are unable to use the cloud um, for whatever reason, there are there is, there are on-prem solutions that we can work with you um, so that you can have a local local server. Um, work with Cetra SEMS. So, yep. Great, thank you. Uh, regarding MRMS, what is the screen size? Can we display other parameters like AHU status? Um, so I believe the the screen size is about a four inch diameter. Um, Maybe don't quote me on that exactly. It should say it on the on our data sheet, but um, it's 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 approximately a four inch um, diameter screen size. The flex is a seven inch larger screen. So again, if you're looking for multiple parameters on uh, multiple rooms to be brought in on a larger screen, uh, the flex is what I would recommend. But that's the size of the MRMS. Um, and on the air handling unit status, um, the I, I do not believe that the MRMS is set up to to do that, um, but we can we can take a look at that. If there's a specific application that you need, feel free to reach out to to any of us, and we can work on that specifically. The MRMS is going to typically display temperature, pressure, 
and um, humidity from the SRCMs and the SRPMs that are connected to it. If you need a on-off digital input status on a uh, air handling unit, that's a perfect application for the Flex. Um, you can set that up as a user-defined badge, and then the Flex will alarm and show you the status um, on, on the unit itself. Thanks. And still some more great questions coming in. I'd encourage anybody else, if you have a burning question, please uh, get it in now. If we're not able to answer it within the remaining time we have here today, um, we can certainly answer it offline. What is input output option that are available in Flex RC? Is it configurable or uh, can we do the program like AHU control? So I think the question here is what, what input output options are available on Flex RC and is it configurable? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the Flex RC, which is the control option of the Flex, has a PI loop that you can um, use as the control loop output from the Flex. So you can configure that um, in the Flex to, you know, to respond to whatever your set point is. Um, that's gonna be over a PI loop. It's a single loop and that's available, um, you know, like I said, to configure the actual set point. Um, in the flex itself, and then it would send that signal out to something like an air handling unit, uh, typically is seen as a, is a um, you know, a valve in the air handling unit system, getting that signal from the flex uh, through the PI control loop. There's also BACnet set point override control available from the flex. Um, and so this would be the flex sending a, a set point override signal out over BACnet specifically from the unit. And again, that you would configure that from the flex. So PI loop is the most um, common use of the control capabilities in the flex RC, but backnet set point override is also available. Excellent. Just got a comment here, just thanking us for the critical information about the product. So thank you for joining. Um, oh, awesome, yeah. A few more if you have the time, Michelle. So this is going uh, yes. to yeah. uh, Pascal, uh, Pascal's and inches of water column in, in the data sheet for SRPM. I, apparently it only lists uh, inches of water column. Um, just wanted a confirmation there that it's also available in Pascal's. Um, yeah, so if you don't see an ordable part number for Pascal's, then the unit that you would get, you would just go into the menu and switch it over to display Pascal's for you. It's still calibrated you know, to um, a specific parameter, uh, which would be the range that you select. You just would select it in into the water column. So just do the, the calculation on your end for what, what the equivalent is, like, um, and then order that range that you need. And then when you get the unit, you can use the menu to change the display to Pascal. Yeah, and I'll reiterate, because I know you brought up this point before, it's, uh, even someone like me on the marketing side without a ton of technical uh, expertise, um, I've been um, easily able to change over all of our um, pressure units, uh, room pressure monitors and units from inches of water column to Pascal. So it's a very easy process. Um, our engineers have done a good job of making it easy to switch over on the units. Um, does the particle counter connect to Cetraflex through Modbus? Maybe you can talk about how our particle counters tie into Cetraflex. Yep, yeah, so that's a great question. So um, we, the particle counter's main output is, um, is Modbus, but we have what's called a BACnet to Modbus uh, gateway converter available. So you'll see on our particle counter data sheets for the SPC series. So this would be SPC 5000, 7,000 and 8,000 specifically, those three units have the ability to work with a gateway that will take the Modbus signal from the particle counter and convert it into BACnet, and then that's sent to the Cetraflex. So that's an easily order, orderable option for you on the SPC 5,000, 7,000, or 8,000. Um, you can see on the, you should see on the data sheet dash BAC at the end if you would like the BACnet. Um, the BACnet option to connect to Cetraflex. If you're not connecting to Cetraflex, 
you can use any of the standard outputs um, outputs from the particle counter to go wherever you need to go. But if you do want that coming into Flex, you just use this, uh, this BACnet gateway that we have. We did have another question come in uh, regarding SEMS. And, you know, I really think this is great. As most people probably know on the call, Cetra has been known for their hardware for decades. And over the last five or so years, we've been developing SEMS that ultimate monitoring and trending solution that really gives us that full solution of hardware and software. So it's great to see all this interest in SEMS. And again, I'd refer everybody to the, uh, to the link that Michelle has up on her screen. Um, there's a little contact form there. If you mentioned that you were part of this webinar, we'll definitely make sure that, um, that your inquiry gets priority. But the question is, um, how does data get from the device, from the hardware to the SEMS software? Mm -hmm. So you can either um, use the flex in addition to the um, to the SEMS system, um, and then the data from the hardware would go into the flex, and then the flex would be sending all of that aggregate data to SEMS. Or if you don't want the flex, that's also available to you, where you just have the hardware. Um, all of that hardware, whether it's a uh, analog signal, BACnet, or, or Modbus, can go into um, what we call the Cetra Edge, um, which is a, a small device that collects all of the data from, the, um, from all of the hardware that you're using. And then the Cetra Edge sends that, that information to the software. Excellent. I think we have time for a couple more questions before we wrap up. Um, this question right here, uh, feel free to jump into this, Michelle, or we can always take this offline. Uh, can you list out the healthcare and pharma regulations that you comply with? Um, sure. So I think, I think probably it would be better to answer that one offline just to get the complete list there, but I can, I can list off a few of them. So um, and you'll see these on our website as well. Um, but if you think about the the particle counters, there are uh, ISO regulations like 14644 um, and uh, one other one that I know is listed on our website that I don't have the number off the top of my head. But um, there are a handful of ISO regulations that our particle counters comply with that are related to pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing. And then um, you know, any of the, the healthcare regulations would typically be coming from ASHRAE and the Joint Commission. And our monitors themselves would allow you to comply with, um, you know, with the ASHRAE and Joint Commission regulations if that's who's, who's auditing you. Um, so it's not necessarily like a regulation on the product itself. It's that our product allows you to comply with those regulations by being able to uh, monitor and uh, provide data on the, the status of those key parameters that are dictated to be measured by the regulations from ASHRAE and Joint Commission. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, we can certainly take that question offline. Actually, recently we published a new page going over some um, compliance regulation and also accreditation that our products and now our, our SEM software have. Um, so. We, again, we can answer that one offline and, and send that page. On the SEM side, uh, some regulations that the software can help meet are USP 797, USP 800, um, as well as the FDA Compounding Quality Act and, uh, and some regulations for the CDC. So um, mm -hmm. this is because we have a, a really large swath of folks from all over the world. Um, we can definitely help hone into what regulations in your area are important and, and let you know if our products comply, which most likely they will. So our last question um, for today is how are the Cetraflex and the SRCM different? Sure. So um, I'm going to, if you're still able to see my screen, I may try to go back to one of the, the summary page I have here. So this shows you the Cetraflex and the Cetra SRCM. So you can see here, um, the number of parameters that are shown is very different between the two. Um, so the Flex is able to show you six different parameters per room, 
and it's able to show you three rooms. So you can actually navigate using the left and right arrows to show three different rooms, uh, six parameters per room. It can also bring in um, user-defined parameters as well. Um, and then the Cetra SRCM is typically showing um, uh, pressure, temperature, humidity, and occasionally showing uh, the, the air changes per hour. Um, so that's, that's the extent of what the SRCM is monitoring. And so you just have more, more uh, parameters, the, uh, more number of parameters that you can add, and then more rooms that you can show on the Cetra Flex as opposed to the SRCM. They're both, they both do visual and audible alarms. Um, I believe they both have the same communication protocols available, but if you need more parameters, um, you'd have the, the Citraflex being able to show that. Excellent. Thank you so much, Michelle. I think we'll wrap it up there. If we weren't able to get to your question, we'll certainly get to it offline or feel free to either contact Rabia or contact us through one of the many contact forms available on our website. Thanks, Michelle, for your time today. This was great information. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining. We went a little bit past the time, so I appreciate you hanging in with us. Um, I also want to thank everybody for their commitment to making and maintaining safe spaces in our hospitals and healthcare facilities across the world. Um, seriously, that this is more important than ever right now, so I want to thank everybody for their commitment in their time today to learn more about these products, et cetera, has to offer. We share in that mission as well. So if you ever have a project or if you ever have a question, our experts uh, stand ready to help you. So thank you everyone for joining. And thanks again, Michelle, uh, for your time today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Great, thanks everyone.